my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here today at Green Thumb Nursery to look at our huge dormant rose display. We have over 115 varieties here ranging from Floribundus, hybrid teas, some shrub roses, some climbers, and our promotional roses, which gives you a good rose for a decent price. So what I'm gonna do today, because there is so many varieties here, is I'm gonna go over a few of my favorite picks, and I'm gonna do, um, try to stay more like hybrid teas, floribundas, and then talk a little bit about them. Hybrid teas are usually what you think of when you see a rose. It's a long stem with a single rose on the end. It's really good for cut roses. That's um, what a lot of people desire. You can, you can cut the other roses, but generally when you are doing a cut rose, you're gonna do a hybrid tea. So again, long stem, single rose. So what I'm starting with here are our blended colors. Now there's a bunch of different ones here. Blended colors have more than one color in them. And a couple of my favorite ones, one I like, I'm gonna start with, this is called Dark Night. And this one here, as you can see, is a two-tone color. It's got a red with a yellow reverse, and it's a dark kind of a brick red. So it really lends itself to a nice contrasting color. Um, fairly disease resistant. Most of, the, most of these varieties are somewhat disease resistant, but again, you still want to have full sun. You still want them to have really good air circulation. They, you know, they're disease resistant as long as you put them in the place where they want to be. Um, so this one here, the flower is not that big. It's a smaller rose, and as it gets hotter, it'll get a little bit smaller, but the color is just exquisite. Not that common. And then this one, this one's called Neil Diamond. And who, who doesn't like Neil Diamond? I mean, come on. This is a red and white, or kind of a pinky and white stripe. This one looks really nice in with some other solid color roses. It has a very strong fragrance. This one um, has 40 to 50 petals on them, and it's a tall upright. So this is a real nice eye popper here. So now we're coming on down here. Now we have our white hybrid teas. So in this group here, I chose to feature Pope John, Pope John Paul II. And this one is a pure white, medium tall. It has a very strong citrus flavor, has over 45 petals. So when they do petal counts, um, the more petals, the more cabbagey it looks like. So we also sell Romanicas, which are kind of a combo between a hybrid tea and a David Austin rose, but they work a little bit better than a David Austin rose. Sometimes the David Austins only flower in the spring or can be a little finicky, but the, the Romanicas that they're breeding nowadays are kind of counteracting that little strangeness that goes on with the David Austin roses. This is another one of my favorite red ones. This one is called Sugar Moon. And this one is also an intense sweet rose flavor or smell and it's a tall variety um, very clear white so it's really a nice addition so now we're going to go into the yellow roses and this one here is called gold metal this is an older one and as you can see it has like hints of pinks and some oranges in with it now this one works very well as a cut rose. I had it one time in a vase and it lasted like weeks. I was like, I can't believe how long this thing lasted. Um, the fragrance is not quite as strong, but um, it is good disease resistant. So that's another good reason why I like that rose. But just the way it lasted in the vase was so awesome. This one too, if you are a... a uh, fan of, um, I can't think of the name of the band, Hotel California, right? And again, what else better than to have the name of our state in the name of the rose? This is a nice big yellow rose, uh, large, um, it's not as fragrant as some of the other ones, but the, but the yellow is just so nice and yellow that this is one of my favorites. Again, good disease resistant. Eagles, that's what I was trying to think eagles if you're an eagle fan okay 
So now we're going to come into our pinks. Now, unfortunately, I happen to be out of this variety, but I do want to mention it. This was called Earth Angel, and it's extremely popular this year. I ordered twice as many, and they cut me on my order. So I've got one more shipment coming next week. So any of these varieties that I'm out of now, I should have by next week. If you really want to get this rose, you, we can take pre-orders ahead if you want to pay for them. This one is $26.99. It's got that kind of a cuppy look to it with the um, uh, cabbage look in the center. So it's kind of a romantica look to it. And it's a very fragrant rose. It's got a lot of good vigor. It's a really great plant. And we've been getting a lot of people buying it. So it's a popular rose for sure. Okay, so now we're gonna come down. This one is Pretty Lady. <clears throat> and this is from the Downtown Abbey uh, series. If you were a big Downtown Abbey fan, this was um, the Pretty Lady Rose. And this one is very fragrant. It's got kind of a, a purpley hue to the pink, but it is, I got one of these for my friends for a, a, a tree in a tree rose form so beautiful it lasted so long and it's got a nice fragrance i mean you could walk into his patio area and smell it it was that fragrant so this is a really good rose very disease resistant um rose is about so size wise now this one this one's called stiletto and stiletto the way they the reason they developed or one of they developed is because this is a really good cut rose um it lasts a long time in the vase it has a strong fragrance and it has a long long stem so it's really good for cutting and as you can see it's got a real nice vibrant dark pinky red color to it so it's a nice addition to your garden all right so now i'm going to switch into the climbers and we're going to visit some more hybrid teas on the other side of our display but for now i we transition into the climbers and i have a few um, one of my favorites is the eden climber this one is a very popular rose and as you can see it has that romantica cabbagey looking to it and it is very fragrant this rose um, is very disease resistant and it does well now climbers are, do just that they're like a vine so they climb now when you're at the end of the season you're not doing a whole lot of pruning on these guys you're just going to leave the main canes take out anything that's small and, and, and spindly and you have to peel the leaves I know it's a pain in the rear, but you need to peel the leaves off of all these roses at the end of the season before, if you've got existing roses. But um, other than that, it being kind of a pain pulling those off, these roses are very um, pro prolific. They bloom a lot throughout the season, which on a lot of your climbers only bloom in the spring. So make sure you check when you're buying a climber that it says it's a repeat bloomer. All the varieties of climbers I carry, which I don't have many because they're not as popular, um, they're all repeat bloomers, so they will continue to bloom throughout the season. <clears throat> the other one that I like is the sister to the um, Eden, and this is Pretty in Pink Eden. Uh, the other Eden is a light pink. This one is a darker pink, still has the high petal count, still is very fragrant, and still very disease resistant. So now we transition into our promotional roses. Now these roses here are going for $19.97, so for $20 you can have a nice rose. Um, my favorite in this group is the Double Delight, and everybody else's favorite as well. This is a two-tone, very fragrant. In my, in my experience, it can be kind of a, a wimpy rose at times. The structure can be a little not very structural. <laughs> but it is a good performer it is a fairly disease resistant rose and again you have to remember you got to give them good air circulation and at least five hours of direct sun if you don't then you might have some issues with some diseases and in insects um, we've got a full line here another one of my favorite ones on the mr is mr lincoln mr lincoln is a large tall rose it gets very tall hence the name mr lincoln he does have a little problem with powdery mildew, so this one you're going to have to make sure you put in an area where it's full sun and good air circulation. Otherwise, you're going to get powdery mildew on him. But a lot of people love Mr. Lincoln. He's a big red rose, and he has um, a good fragrance. 
So that's what I'm going to touch on for the high, for promotionals. I do have some other varieties on this side over here. Um, again, they're all good roses. I've got a few uh, Floribundas mixed in here, but but again, these are these are your good deals of the day kind of roses. So now we're going to switch on over here. I'm going to go into the Floribundas and the shrub type roses. Now this year I have gone. This particular location has a few of the patio type roses, which are little miniature roses. One of my favorite ones, and I just like the color on it. The little pink is so sweet. This is a little miniature called Cutie Pie, and it is a cutie pie. It does have actually a slight fragrance to it, but these, these guys, the roses are about so. So these are great for containers or maybe a, a front planting, like you have some bigger roses in the back and you want to just put something cute in front of them, you could use this for that. So now we're going to switch into our uh, Floribundas. Now this one, this one is called South African Sunbelt. And the, the big deal about this one is this one performs very well in the heat. So a lot of these um, Sunbelt varieties are bred to be very heat resistant. Now, as you can see, these canes are a little bit smaller and that is, that's okay. On Floribundas, you're going to have a lot more canes because these guys grow more in clusters. The roses are in clusters. They tend to be a little bit smaller plants and they have more flowers on them. So if you're not necessarily caring about um, cutting them, you can cut these, but, um, and you just want a pop of color, the Floribundas are probably the way to go if you want to use a rose. And what's nice about them is they just keep on giving you flowers as long as you're cutting off the dead ones. Um, this one here is called Sheila's Perfume. And she is fragrant, very strong, fruity smell. A lot of the Floribundas were not fragrant, but they've been breeding the fragrance into them. And I just got water down my sleeve. <laughs> but uh, again, just a really good performer. It's, a, uh, it's got three different colors in there, oranges, uh, pinks, yellow. So it's just a little, it's a fun little rose. And these guys are very disease resistant. It, um, anything that has a shiny, glossy foliage on it, tends to be a little more disease resistant than ones that are kind of a matte, matte finish on the leaves. So that's another thing, if you, if you see them growing, you can't see the leaves here, but if you see them growing in a pot, if they've got a shiny leaf, they're gonna be more disease resistant than ones that have matte finished leaves. Okay, this one is my all time favorite. This one is called ketchup and mustard. And it is just that, yellow and red. And the reason I like this one right now, it, because it is beautiful and it does have a fragrance, this rose I have planted in a spot where it really shouldn't be planted. It doesn't get a lot of sun um, and it doesn't get diseases. This rose, the only time I get anything on this, I do get some black spot on it if I water at night, which you're not supposed to do and I get water on the foliage, it can get some black spot. So I just peel the leaves off, throw them away, it's no big deal. This thing does not get mildew. It doesn't seem to have any insects on it. It's got a nice shiny glossy foliage. So if you've got that spot where it's not quite full sun, you really shouldn't be putting a rose there, this rose will work in that spot. So ketchup and mustard for me is probably my all time favorite out of all these roses. But this is a really good choice for that hard to grow place or the easy to grow place. I mean, it'll grow just fine out in the full sun, but these guys are really a good choice for that. Eh, not really sure I should put the rose there. Next, we're going to have um, Drop Dead Red. And it is just that, Drop Dead Red. And it's a nice, it's a fairly large size rose. And for a Floribunda, it's a 30 petal and it has a mild tea smell to it, but that rose color is just, the picture doesn't do it any justice. It's really a nice clear red rose and in clusters, it makes a nice pop of color in your yard. So that's another good choice for Floribundas. Now we're coming down to good old icebergs. We do have the iceberg roses. We have the white one. We have the pink one and we have the burgundy one. And for $23 guys, our roses probably potted are going to be around 40 bucks next year. So if you need a hedgerow, now's the time to get them. 
because these are not cheap. They're not going to be cheap in the pot. So, so there you go. We've got we've got all three of them. We got the white, the burgundy, and the pink. This one now we're going to pop back into our hybrid teas because we're heading back down the front side of the of the display. This one was new last year. This one is called a perfume factory. And that is exactly what it is. It is a perfume factory. It is very fragrant. It's a strong rose and it has nice um, foliage disease resistance, 40 to 50 petals. It's a good size rose. And as you can see, it's kind of a two-tone lavender. Then my next one, uh, this is Neptune. And this is a lavender rose. This is a large size lavender rose and it is very fragrant very large flower when it when it flowers <clears throat> okay my next favorite one this one is Barbara Streisand of course you know the older you are you probably know Barbara better than the younger folks <laughs> but this one is very fragrant it's a large rose it's got nice shiny foliage so it's very disease resistant and it's a good performer, Barbara Streisand. So next we have, now we're gonna get into our kind of a peachy uh, apricot -y colors. This one is called Princess Charlene de Monaco. And it's one of those uh, Romantica roses. It has a good, very strong fragrance. And as you can see, lots of petals in the flower. This is also a disease resistant rose. And then I have apricot candy. Apricot candy. And as you can see, it's got a lot of little roughly um, petals to it. So it kind of has a ruffled look. And it's a good strong disease resistance, very spicy fragrant. This was, I bought this one and that other one I was talking about for my friend, the pretty lady rose. Um, he has them on either side of a bench. This one is also very fragrant. Again, when you walk into his patio, you could just smell the rose. And it's kind of that citrusy smell. It's not that old grandma smell. <laughs> Some of roses can have, but I like, I like that citrusy smell. So this next one, we're going into the reds now, and that's where we're going to finish off with our, our tour. This one is called Rouge Royale. And it is a very dark red. And as you can see, it's got a ton of petals. So this is your Romantica, typical Romantica, the, the, where they bred it between the, the David Austin and a, and a hybrid tea to give you your long stem. And all those petals. Um, I don't think it gives a petal count on here, but it's a lot of petals. There's a lot in there. So that's a good choice. Um, Papa Milan. This is another really good rose. This one is a large rose. It gets very big, um, fairly decent. It's, it's an award winner. So and this one also has a good fragrance. This one, this one's called Legends. <clears throat> and this one is an Oprah Winfrey rose. She was the one who paid to have this commission to honor all the legendary women and this rose i'm not kidding you folks in the spring can be this big it's huge so it's a really neat rose as it gets hotter the rose gets a little bit smaller but those first blooms in the spring that's what we're always looking for anyway that first bloom in the spring is huge so it's just a really cool rose and named after a really great woman um, well the woman who created it commissioned it to be grown so it's just a, a, a good rose to have in your, in your yard if, if you like red. The other one I like, this one's Firefighter. And of course, we all love the firefighters because you know what? They saved our rear ends these last couple years and they will continue to. Firefighters are the mainstay of our community and we're very thankful to have a rose that could commemorate them. This is a red rose. It's, a, it's an intense um, old English rose smell and uh, 40 to 45 petals. But again, just something to honor those guys who, who work so hard to take care of us. And we, we appreciate you guys, firefighters. So there you go. That's just kind of a rough showing of what we have. There's lots of varieties here. We have people here who can help you make choices. 
and um, they're really a good addition to your yard. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video, please click like and hit your subscribe button if you want to continue to get our videos and the little bell to let you know when we have new videos. But thank you so much for watching and have a great day.